artist and I'm a long arm quilter and here on my channel I like to show you finishes from client quilts as well as some of my own projects. So I welcome you back. Thanks for uh, being here today. Hope you've had a great holiday so far. Um, we're in between Christmas and New Year's. We've just finished up here in our house. We finished up three days of Christmas celebration. <laughs> Literally three uh, full days. On Christmas Eve, <clears throat> we gathered at my parents' home. They only live about 30 minutes away. And I have four sisters, all four sisters and their families were there, as well as uh, all of my family and my mom and dad. So it was a full house. And I can't tell you the last time that all, all of our siblings have been together, plus all of the nieces and nephews and everything. So we had a great time. So that was Christmas Eve. And then Christmas Day, um, my, my mother-in-law came over for the day and we celebrated Christmas here um, with our immediate family that are still at home. Uh, obviously went to church that day as well and celebrated uh, Christ's birth there, um, starting out the day and then just had a wonderful day at home. And then yesterday, all of our kids came back. So we have seven children, three are out of the house and four are um, still here. But the other three were able to come back yesterday and with all the kids and their families. And uh, we had a wonderful, just a really, really, really good day. Um, played a lot of new games, just laughed a lot, ate more food than I wanna think about, but um, just had a really good day. So I pray that you have had a wonderful Christmas and uh, this week in between the Christmas and New Year's holiday that uh, you get some chance just to relax. It feels like things have kind of slowed down today, um, starting into this week. And so um, I have a fun, I say that every week, I have a great video for today because we are doing a 2022 year in review. I thought this was a perfect time to go through projects, um, almost all quilts, a few table runners and things like that, but things that I have made this year that I thought I would share. And uh, so this is not client quilts. These are all things that I have done um, and a lot of them have given away as gifts over the years, over the year, all in the past year. So this is, we're gonna start in January and go right on through. If I don't have the quilt still because I gifted it to someone, then I will put in pictures to show, but I'm excited. This was a lot of fun to go back through my calendar and, um, and just to remember all the things I was, I honestly was shocked how much I got done this year. And uh, so if you have not done that, I encourage you to go back through and um, check your calendar or, or your pictures so that you can see all that you worked on this year. It's a great inspiration. And um, I gave away a lot more than I realized too, which is, that feels good. That really feels good that, um, that I'm giving some homemade gifts and uh, I enjoyed that as well. So how about we get started? So in January, starts off kind of slow, kind of simple, and then uh, then the more complicated quilts, do I wanna say, as the year went on, but we'll start um, in January. Um, I decided to start finishing a few projects that I had, mostly scraps that were laying around the house, <laughs> laying around my sewing room. So I started with um, this very simple, this wasn't even done on the long arm, um, but this is one of those rag quilts. And I have made one in the past. And actually, I was asking my kids, whatever happened to that? And I think I sold it, to be honest. We had, I've mentioned before on some other videos, we had um, a You Pick Pumpkin patch for about 18, 19 years. And we had a cabin that we would sell baked goods. And that's where I sold a lot of quilts. So if I can't find a quilt these days, I either gave it away or I sold it during that pumpkin patch time. But I think the one that I originally made like this, we did sell. So this is just scraps that I've used that I had laying around. So there's really no rhyme or reason. You can kind of see, <laughs> kind of a funky little thing right there. Um, but if you've never made one of these uh, rag quilts, they're super easy to make. So this is um, flannel. So this square right here is the same on the front and the back. And this is probably an eight inch square. I'm not quite certain. And you cut a piece of batting let's say seven inches square, and you put that in between the two pieces and you just do, um, I just did a stitch, right? A diagonal stitch both directions. And that is your, now you wanna stop. Um, did I stop? No, actually I went all the way, all the way to the edge on both of them. And so you make those blocks first and then you lay out those blocks. Um, and obviously right sides are out and you would lay those blocks 
along with the one beside it and you stitch right down there so that on this side there is no seam showing on this side there is and then you go through and clip your seam allowances and throw it in uh, the washer or dryer it will give off a lot a lot a lot of threads uh, so be prepared for that but then it makes this fun little crinkly thing there this one isn't very big honestly this is more um, I use it just a decoration over um, a bench that I have, but you could definitely, if it's not still throwing lint off, you could use it as a, a throw blanket on the floor for a baby or something like that. So again, this is no rhyme or reason, pretty simple. Um, some big squares, some smaller, I just just using up the scraps that I had. Started off just trying to, to finish some projects that were laying around. So that's the first one for January. Second one in January that I made, um, you can see right here is this, let me just pull it down. Okay, so this one is another project that I had um, back in January, just laying around. I wanted to finish up this, some things that I had. So this is actually a panel. It's a flannel piece, um, just has some snowmen. I'll show you the whole thing and then we'll talk about it. All right, so this one is a snowman panel. And um, let me see. So you can notice some of the same fabrics that I used in the, um, in that rag quilt. So I, again, it's flannel, so I tried to use a few. I did the panel itself. Yeah, the middle part is entire panel. And then I just added a, a skinny border around here. So you can see this green and a solid red right here. And then I did a larger yellow, um, a golden and then a red, and then I bound it with a green flannel. So can you see the pantograph on there? I love this one. This one is called Sweater Weather. So it looks like the, the cable knit sweaters that you would wear. Let me get this one up closer. It's a really cute, works really well for uh, anything winter. And now this one, we I know we talked about last week how you can um, put a quilt on different directions on your long arm and then it can uh, your pattern can be different directions this one obviously the the cable knit is running this way so you would have to load it um, up and down for this because if not if you loaded it sideways then your cables could be up and down but you know the the knit sweaters that you had the cables run up and down so you could run this either direction Actually on the back, I did not use a flannel. This one is a regular piece of uh, fabric, cotton fabric. You can see there the cables running up and down. So maybe I should have done it that way. I'm now looking at it. It does kind of look like the knit sweater, you know, the cables knit running up and down. So I have it sideways, but if I hold it this way, you can see how the cables might look like they were going up and down. That might be kind of neat too. Actually, more I think about it, maybe that would have been better. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, that's another January finish. And because I finished, it was only out for a short time last year, once I got the binding done. And um, so I'm excited to put that out. And um, for Christmas decorations, we always decorate with nativities. Not really Santa. Um, not that I'm against Santa, but we just don't decorate with a lot of Santa. So we do a lot of nativities and I really don't even do a lot of snowmen at Christmas. I save those for my winter decorations. So we'll have Christmas up for about another week and then we'll start pulling out all of our snowmen. And so I'm excited to put that quilt out for January and February before we switch to spring things in, um, probably middle of March or so. So I've got a lot of fun, um, snowman decor to put out. The next project that I have, I actually gifted this one. And again, like I said, in past year in January, I was trying to use up a lot of scraps. So let me insert a picture of this quilt here and then we'll talk about it. Excited. I just called this a four patch, my original four patch. <laughs> I designed this on EQ8 and just laid out some of the colors that I had. 
and the fabrics. Um, I love these color fabrics. I think I've mentioned that before <laughs> to you. But uh, I designed this in EQ8 and laid it out and just stitched it simple, four patch, not a, and then I did some half square, if I remember the picture right, uh, some half square triangles, and then some uh, inserted some white creamy color fabric there. Um, and then I ended up gifting this one away. The finish on that one is Karen's Chevrons. And if you're a long arm quilter and are looking for that um, pantograph, Karen's is spelled K-E-Y-R-O-N-S, Karen's Chevrons. And I actually used that pantograph several times this year. And I'll show you in some other quilts that are coming up. But I may have to make another one like that. Again, those were my colorways and I gifted that away and uh, really enjoyed that quilt. So uh, since I designed it in EQ8, I still have all the, the layout for it, so I could do that pretty easily. So that was another January finish. And then we had a wedding to go to last January. So that happy couple's been married almost a year now. And let me insert a picture of that quilt for you and then we'll talk about it. All right, so that quilt was made from this book by Sherry McConnell called Labor of Love. And Sherry McConnell is uh, the owner of A Quilting Life. If you've ever listened to her podcast or her, um, she does has a YouTube channel with her daughter called A Quilting Life. And I've made several quilts out of this book. I enjoy um, this one. And that quilt that you just saw a picture of was um, called Garden Path. And here is Sherry's version of it in the Sorry for the glare there. So if you know Sherry's colorway, um, more pastel, almost a muted pastel, really. Um, and that's, she calls this garden path. So in the quilt that I made, the couple that was getting married um, really enjoy, hor enjoy horses and ranching and that kind of stuff. So I went with the brown colorway on that. Um, so if you can envision, you don't have to do a quilt the same colors. A lot of times I do, and some of the ones that I'll show you here today, I actually use the same colors that they use in the, um, in the pattern. But on that one, I used some browns to go the more earthy tones and uh, made that design. And then the pantograph that I used on that one was the diagonal plaid. I shrunk that one down and, um, and finished that off, and I thought that looked really really nice the couple was happy with it then I had a busy January all of these were finished in January um, another thing I like to do I enjoy going into antique stores and I enjoy looking for quilt tops that have not been finished and especially if they're hand quilted I really um, I like the hand quilting I love the history of the of the hand quilting and just holding a quilt and wondering who it was that put this together. And um, I don't have any certain colorways that I'm looking for. It's usually something that I just enjoy. Uh, if I enjoy the pattern, or I enjoy the colors. It doesn't even bother me sometimes if it's got stains or something. To me, that's history and I enjoy that. So this next quilt was a partial top that I found at an antique store. And then um, because I have a long arm, uh, I like to finish those and um, a lot of people would say you need to do it a hand quilting. I have found that you can finish it on the long arm and it just, um, it adds a lot. I mean it's not the same as hand quilting which is fine. Um, but I, I enjoy doing this and seeing the look. So you want to see this one. This is um, Grandmother's Flower Garden. These blocks were all hand. Now I haven't finished this one in the binding. Um, I've got to get to that. Actually, several of the projects that I pulled out to show you today, I don't have the binding finished on. I think that's a problem. I think what I end up doing, I'm so excited to get the quilting part done and then I'm on to the next one and don't fully finish my projects. And that's, I need to make that a goal in 2023. So this is uh, Grandmother's Flower Garden. When I got these, this was all together like this. I did not put any of the blocks together, um, but they were all hand stitched. And uh, this is not a full-size quilt. I could use it, actually this piece hangs in my 
Um, actually, behind my long arm, I have um, a, uh, an antique um, quilting frame. And it's not set up, I just have um, like the legs on either side and then I have the long bars sitting on top of those legs and then, or, uh, you know, the long bars. And there are two of those long bars. So what I do is I pin this quilt like in, uh, to be held in between those two bars so that it hangs down and it, it's what I'm looking at when I'm looking from my long arm um, back towards the wall. This hangs on that side. So it's long and narrow. You could use this um, at the end of a bed, probably, something like that. But uh, all of these, um, just some fun. These were all hand pieced. And then let me show you, I can hold it up larger so you can see how big it is. So like I said, it's not very wide, probably only um, a yard, 36 inches wide. Do you ever do that? Did your grandmother taught you that? A yard is from your nose to the as far out as you can hold. So I would say it was about 36 inches wide. Isn't that pretty? I, I just love this. And then it's um, probably twice that long. Oh. I just love that. And part of the reason that I haven't bound this is because of um, the scalloped edges and I just haven't decided I don't know that I'll cut off the scallops I mean what you could do you know is to make a square and just cut it right there and right there you know to make it a square quilt I just hate that somebody did all that work on those pieces and then I cut them off so I'm not sure that I'll do that. I think I need to cut a bias binding and then just go around. It will take some work, but just go around each one. I just added a muslin on the back. I didn't want to do a print on this one, so just a muslin. But then when I hold this in close, you can see the pantograph that I used. Um, this one is called Woven Wind. almost mimics a clamshell type or a Baptist fan, just a little more flair to it. Uh, but I thought it added a little bit of whimsy along with a little bit of traditional feel to it. And I, I think it added well, so we're getting close so you can see that. The blocks are in really good shape. You can tell that they're a little um, dark, maybe a little stained, but I don't remember per se, any holes, any rips, any tears. Um, so yeah, so like I said, right now this is hanging in my sewing room. I like that little nod to uh, those who have come before me to be right there with me in my, in my quilting studio. So really, really nice, really nice. I, I like that. I like that piece. All right, in February, I worked on a baby quilt for um, a niece of mine who was having her first baby, and her mom, which would be my sister-in-law, asked if I could make a baby quilt. And uh, let me insert a picture here so you can see this quilt. So on this one, I started off, um, anytime somebody asks me to make a custom quilt for them, I like to know what's in their mind. You know, what have they seen? What are, the, what are they thinking when they want a custom quilt? And then if they really don't have any, usually, usually always, they have a little bit of an idea. They may not know how to express that to me. So I will usually send several um, pictures of projects that I um, like or that I think they might like, and then they can say, yes, I like this, and tell me what they like about it. Is it the colors that you like? Is it um, the shape? Is it the design? You know, what is it that you like? So, when we were starting this baby quilt, um, I sent them a, some designs, and this is one, let me show you first. This is Camille Roskelly. This is from many years ago. Uh, this book is called Simplify by Camille Roskelly, and one of the baby quilts that she has in here 
is this one right here with a monogram. And monograms um, seem to be coming back. I don't know. This is, and so I sent a picture of this and did it in the colorway that uh, they were doing the baby's room in. And they said, no, that, that was too busy. They didn't want that. But what they did want was the baby's name. So I kind of used this as an inspiration. And then on that quilt, you noticed um, they wanted the baby's name. And so I had a friend of mine embroider that just on a piece of white. Um, I can't remember if it was white fabric or white muslin. I, muslin, I really can't remember. But we embroidered the, um, the name. And then they just wanted it very simple, more of a modern look. And so um, I then incorporated that one piece where the name was into a larger piece of white fabric and then um, put the border around it and then just stitched it and stitched it really good. <laughs> I like the texture that was in that one. That one was called Time Warp. Now you kind of look, it looks very similar to what I did on this one, which was the Woven Wind, but the Time Warp. Um, pantograph and I did not bring my my binder today to show you that up close um, hold on just a second and I'll go get that okay so real quick let me show you the the two different pantographs there how they're similar but they um, give a little bit of different look all right so this one is time warp and I think on the baby quilt, I actually did it this direction. And then this one is the woven winds that I just showed you on this antique um, mother's flower, or grandmother's flower garden. So a little different, like I said, this one kind of mimics um, a little bit of Baptist fan, a little bit of clamshell, where this one, different, but similar. And then this is the time warp that I used on that baby's quilt. And it just added a lot of texture, um, but the colors very minimal and uh, really cute. They were really happy with that and the little guy's using it in his room, I'm assuming. So again, just be able to take just some inspiration from one quilt and then turn it into uh, your own creation. That's, that's kind of fun. So that was February. In March, I did make another baby quilt for... Um, for a friend who is having their second baby. And let me insert a picture of that one here. Now again, that quilt was made um, out of this book as well from the Simplify book. And let me show you that pattern. This one um, is called Little Man. So Camilla actually made it up in boy prints, but I did that one in girl prints because obviously the baby was a girl. This is a real simple pattern. Um, you use four different fabrics and then you arrange them in different ways. Um, so you have some of the fabrics that are the same here and then the same one here, right? Yeah, but the middle parts are different. And then you arrange them, put a little bit of um, the uh, uh, background fabric, and then turn the blocks different directions. So very simple, and then you have a little bit of a couple borders just on the top and the bottom, not all the way around. Um, but this went together really quickly. And so then I made that for in a girl colors. And I finished that one in, uh, the pantograph is called Propel. Now, a lot of times I'll use Propel on um, airplane, something that I want to, hmm, oh, here it is, okay. I've used this one on, on themed fabrics, like I said, like airplane ones, but I, I used it on that baby quilt. Let me get this just right so you can see. I don't know. I don't know what inspired me. It's been a while, obviously, since I did that one. Um, but I did this one pretty tight on that baby quilt. Um, and that's called Propel. This is by the Long Arm League. This is one that she puts out. So fun, 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 fun. Baby quilts are so fun because they come together quickly. And uh, the mamas just love to use them. I enjoy making baby quilts. All right, on into springtime.
All right, so in the springtime, we're getting to April here. Springtime, I decided uh, to put my name out there to do a couple of pattern testing for um, usually new designers or fairly new designers that were needing people to um, test their new patterns. So in April, I actually did two. And the first one is called uh, Diagonal Dazzle. Let me find my notebook right here. Okay. So the first one I did was called Diagonal Dazzle, and this is uh, the company, uh, the gal's company is called Mix, Measure, Make. And here's a picture of the pattern. This is now out. You can go to her website. Um, you can see it there at the top, Mix, Measure, Make. And um, she's got a couple different patterns out there. This is a black and white. Um, when I printed it off, I did it in black and white, but obviously I think her colorways were more of uh, like a, a greenish aqua banana pepper type colors um, and then I'll, I'll show you mine I actually did mine in red white and blues and so I'll show it the neat thing about this pattern you can make it in different sizes but then you also have enough blocks left over uh, enough pieces that you can make the second one and I have not done this these these pieces are sitting up there in my sewing room and I don't know why I haven't finished it but so that's kind of a neat idea you know because you're cutting them I think it was like half square triangles. You were uh, using the larger part. You weren't stitching down either side of a middle seam or you know of a middle part. You were uh, stitching down the middle, folding it back, and you were cutting away the little bit of extra. And then you can use these extras to make a secondary quilt. So let me show you mine. I like I said, I did mine in red, white, and blue. And I did make the very large one. Oh, I'll turn it this way. Show it to you, and then we'll talk about it here. Close so you can see one of the blocks. So when I chose the colorway, I did um, red, white, and blue because this was in April, and I was thinking then we would have it out for for um, summer, starting Memorial Day. I usually put out my red, white, and blue stuff starting Memorial Day all the way through Labor Day. So very neat, a very intricate design. There you can see, and it's the same block. I have one. One, two, three. I'm going to draw it this way. Three. One, two, three. So it's a square. It's been a while again. I apologize. The sad thing about this quilt is over the, um, over the summer I had this out on our porch. And we have a wraparound porch around a couple sides of our house. And I had this out. And we have a new puppy. And one day she decided to get a hold of my blanket. My quilt. Look at that. I don't know. I don't know if it got wet or something and she was, uh, he, not even she, I don't know why I said that. Look, so like, made me sad. Yeah, got a whole corner of this side. Look at that. He was not my favorite puppy there for a while. But, live and learn, right? All right, um, let me show you the back because on the back you can see the pantograph a little better. This pantograph is called um, Becker's, Becker's, B-E-C-K-E-R-S, Becker's Crop Circles. So I made it pretty large. This one's been washed a couple times. You can see how it's uh, getting the, the puckering to it, which is always fun. Um, there, you can see that. So I did it kind of large uh, just to add some softness with all of the strong angular I, I like the print I like how it all comes together and then you get the larger design between the blocks so it's the same block here and here but then do you see how you get like these secondary patterns in here on the outskirts of the the block where it meets up because the block meets you know right down here through the white part so half of that half of that uh, square 
is on one block and half of it's on the other block. When you put it together, it looks like a, a whole square there. So really nice. So if you would like to make that quilt, you can go to Mix, Measure, and Make, and I find that pattern on there. When I um, pattern test for um, designers, um, I take it seriously because they want to know. I'm what you're doing as a pattern design or pattern tester is you are making sure they have enough fabric that um, that's called for. You're making sure the directions are clear. And some people will hire a tech editor as well to do some of those more techy things, but I, I tend to do that when I pattern test as well. So I'll have notes all, um, you know, my pattern, I'll have it all written up, um, marked up as I'm making notes of things. Are they, is this too much fabric? Is it not enough fabric? As a long arm quilter, I always wanna make sure they've got enough fabric for the backing because in long arm quilting, we need some extra. If you were just doing it on your home machine, you may not need as much, but because a long arm, we have to attach that backing fabric onto leaders on the long arm, we need some extra um, fabric. And so I always tell people I need four extra inches on every side. So if your quilt is 80 by 80, I need 88 by 88 backing and batting fabric. So that's one of the things I always look for when I'm pattern testing. Uh, if the instructions are clear, if there's if the designs are clear, if there's any typos, uh, I'm looking for all of that. So that was the first one that I pattern tested. And then in April, I did a second one. Let me show you that one. This pattern was called Pot Blossoms, and this is, uh, the company is Pot Cake and Company. This one, very large pieces. Um, very different from the first one I did where the first one was very small pieces. This is large pieces of fabric. This came together very quickly. And um, I did the colorway. I printed this in color. She shows several color options. This isn't the best. My printer wasn't printing the best in color. There are some different color options that she has. And in the pattern itself, she even includes um, a coloring page so that you can test out your colors and let me show you my quilt that I made on this one I used um, all fabrics from Coriotor <laughs> I had to think about this is all Coriotor fabrics and I made the largest one too kids come in here and help me do this, huh? And I can insert pictures so you can see the, the quilt laid out. So you can see um, about the same size blocks as that first one I did, but you're only using one or two fabrics. Uh, a much more modern look. And again, these are all Cory Yoder fabrics that she had out um, back last spring. And then even a, this is a wide backing. And sometime we'll talk about wide backings, but this is one of her wide backing prints that she had out. And so I use that on the back and then the binding. Um, I like that. I like that look of the gingham type um, binding. All right, I have to show you this pantograph because this is one of my favorites. This is so, f such a fun pantograph. This is called Knit One Pearl Two. If I can't get it there, you can kind of see. I just, I just love this um, swirly design. It stitches out so easily. Just adds a lot of fun, flare, feminine, softness to it. I really like this one. Let me show you that one as um, the printout so you can see that. It's just a fun print. Sorry, I should have 
had this out earlier so that I didn't have to. Here is the, um, back up a little bit, here's the Becker's crop circles. I did it larger than this is printed out on the, that first test quilt, that red, white, and blue one. But that's what that one looked like. And let me find the... And here's the knit one purl tube. So it stitches out this direction. But obviously in the quilt, so you know, it may look, this one looks good no matter which direction. It's not, I wouldn't even say it's really directional. It's gonna look really good. So obviously it's gonna stitch left to right that direction. Um, so if you're wanting your quilt a certain way, we can obviously orient it that way. Um, but on a bed, I don't think you're gonna care which direction. I, I, this is a lot of fun, uh, a lot of fun pantograph. So that was my second test quilt. And um, let's see, yeah, a second test quilt, and I did them back to back in April. It's a lot of fun. Pop, pop cake? No, what did I say it was? Pot cake and company is the is the uh, is the designer, and this is called Pop Blossoms, and you can find that on her website. She has many designs, many patterns out. Really nice cute ones. All right, another one that I worked on in April, um, kind of changing the whole um, design thing. I love Civil War stuff too. I have a lot of likes, I guess. I like the, the fun, um, you know, little girl color, pink, purples like that and then I just I love the Civil War type stuff too so this is uh, Joe Morton if you're familiar with Joe Morton she had prolific has so many books out and this is Joe's little favorites and I worked on um, I have a lot of Civil War fabric that I've that's one of those things I pick up a lot um, but I don't always finish as many as I should so I worked on this nine patch checkerboard very tiny let me see, the squares are one and a half inch. <laughs> and, um, and you're sewing them that way. It's not even, uh, you're cutting them one and a half inches and sewing them one and a half inches. It's not like you're strip piecing it, any, any of it. And again, this is one that I have finished, but I have not bound it. And this one I did basically the same colors that she had. Closer so you can see. All Civil War reproductions. I oriented that, um, I didn't miter my quarters, I guess I probably should. That skinny uh, border there, I oriented it so it was all um, going away from the quilt and not parallel, you know. So this one, I had it coming out this way and not straight up and down like it was there. So just a little table topper. This one, the size of it is, well, the batting you cut 20, oh, so it's 22, 22 by 22. So not a very big. I have this hanging in my sewing room as well. But obviously I haven't finished the binding yet. Why, I don't know. Um, because it hangs in my sewing room, it has a lot of little lint pieces. So I want to show you this one, um, this pantograph is called Peacock's Tail. Sorry for the lint on there, the little pieces. Peacock's Tail, very swirly, very antique -y look, very intricate. If you can see that, let me see if I can find it in my binder here. Very tight, very intricate. Isn't that, look at that. <laughs> That's a piece of artwork in itself, isn't it? And so then those nest into each other. So you can see how, you know, this top part up here would nest right in here when you're doing the second row. Um, but it adds a really cute oh 
wouldn't even call it cute, sophisticated, very um, classy. Say that. So my first order of business in 2023 needs to be binding my projects that I have not finished. That will have to be a priority. All right, so that finished out April. And again, that book is Joe's Little Favorites. She has many, many of these books out um, to do, and lots of cute projects. Here's the back, you can see some of those. Old Civil War, there's that one that I made. Some blues. And I just think this is so pretty, even just stacking them on a chair like that. I just, I like that look, I like that. With the antique stuff around it too. Very cute. So Jo Morton, if you're not following her, you should go find her as well. And then, again, I told you that I like to go to antique stores and find quilts that haven't been finished and finish them. I just feel sorry for them. They're sitting there and, and they haven't been finished. I hope someday when, when I'm gone and I have quilt tops that still need to be made that somebody will pick them up and finish them for me. Because... Um, when you work on it, you want to finish, you want them to be finished. So another one that I did, this was another quilt store, not a quilt store, an antique store find. And these are maple leaves. Silly chair. Get that out of the way for you. All right, maple leaves. So what's interesting about this one is the maple leaves point in towards the quilt. So the first three rows there are all pointing in that way. Let me hold it this way. Maybe you can see that better. So the three on this side are all pointing in and the three rows on this side are all pointing in. All done. These are more what I would say 60s, 70s fabrics. So not terribly old, obviously. <laughs> it's all relative, right? Um, not terribly old. I can get up close so you can see some of these fabrics. So like that one. You might have a dress made from that one. That might be a 50s. And then you've got more a plaid one. It's a red one. That might even be a 30s type look. What do you think? But this one, I think that's a 60s or a 70s print. This is a cute one. This is a red polka dot, red and white polka dot. And then you have, you know, a black gingham. And then here, blue one. It's almost like a polka dot and a gingham. And another plaid. These look more 60-ish ones to me. That's what I'm, those fabrics look more 60-ish. That one, anybody have a dress like that? The brown plaid. So what's fun about this quilt is it not, not necessarily is it fall, all fall colors. I mean, there's a purple. And uh, this orange one is a cute one. And then even some florals. But then, you know, so you have the maple leaf blocks and then in between is the, the solid color yellow. And I just put a muslin backing on this one as well. Now, I did stitch this one pretty tight as well. This pantograph is called Merge. Tight lines with a bit of a diagonal. Um, bit of diagonal, then it goes up and comes back down. Nest inside of each other. smudge on that one there can you see that so added a touch of modernness I thought to this one that was you know I guess most people may not even pick this up at an antique store maybe it's not there I just thought it was cute I thought it was cute and added that merge and again binding's not done <laughs> I don't know I'll work on that but that's a fun quilt Fun, 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 because a lot of times um, when quilt tops are at a quilt store, or I'm sorry, when quilt tops are at an antique store, they don't sell them for very much. They really, really don't. And so if you can finish them yourself, 
and then you've got a touch of history, touch of the past, along with new stuff. Oh, I've got to move some of those out of the way there. All right. Then we're on in getting into June. In June, I made a graduation quilt for uh, a friend of ours, and I'll insert a picture here. So my daughter, um, this was a friend of my daughter's, uh, actually our whole family, um, but one of my daughters went with me to pick out the fabrics for this one. The recipient of this one loves nature, um, and so we picked out those fabrics. I really don't know the name of them. I can look it up and put it in the description, what uh, fabric line that was. But when we were at the quilt store picking up fabrics, we saw this um, small little pattern. This is you know, this is the Villa Rosa designs, and these are little pattern cards that uh, you might look around, your quilt store may have them. Sorry for the glare, this is on a glossy paper here. Just a couple bucks, this one was $2, all right. Real simple, this one used um, 10 fat quarters and a half yard of binding, that's it, okay. Um, I think we improvised I think we bought a layer cake and we improvise so you um, it says from each fat quarter you're cutting nine and a half inch squares and then some strips as well and I think we improvised because I had a layer cake so we cut the squares and then uh, you know again you take a pattern and if it doesn't quite fit what you have you can make it work you can do it um, so Villa Rosa designs use this pattern and again the colorway this one is browns oranges blues turquoise and we made it total pastel if you saw that one now i finished that one with um, ginger flower pantograph again just continuing that um, nature feel this is ginger flower simple cute Went right along with that quilt. Really cute. This one's good on a little baby's quilt too. Works nicely on that. So that was June. We're just moving right along through the year. In July, we had another wedding. And um, so I've gifted that one. So I'll insert a picture here. I had done some long arm quilting for a client and she had made a quilt that looked like this and hers was pastel colors and um, when I was working on the quilt I thought I can do that design that one that one's pretty simple so I uh, did a few measurements when I was working on her quilt and wrote down the the measurements that I had and um, used fabrics that I had purchased hmm those are those fabrics that look like um, linen but they're not linen it's actually cotton but I think it's a linen line it is the name is something linen so I had the blue the the gold and the brown put those together and made the pattern myself now I since have found that I saw that same design the pattern on Woodbury Way which I think in my last video I showed um, a client quilt that was Which one was it? It was one of the two quilt, one, I, I can't remember now. Uh, it was the Halloween quilt I showed in my last video. So you can check that out, that one out. That was also on Woodbury Way um, website. You can look that up. And when I was looking up that Halloween quilt, I found the pattern for this quilt as well. I did not write down the name of it. You can go and uh, search through that uh, website if you'd like to find it. But it's a very simple uh, pattern, similar to Log Cabin, but very big. And it didn't start in the middle and work all the way around. You started in one corner, put two strips, two strips, two strips, two strips. And, um, and fairly large. I think they were like two and a half inch strips as well. So fairly large. Went together very quickly. And it looked really cute um, for that wedding quilt. Then I finished that and the pantograph is called I-Cat. I-K-A-T. And I like the look of that one. It added, it still kept the modern feel to it. 
um, but added some, um, because the pattern itself was so angular, then um, the iCat adds that um, hourglass shape, you know, I guess as you want to call that. There are two different, so I think I used this one, iCat, on this one. So still a modern feel to it, I feel like, um, a modern look to it, but on the straight angles of that quilt, it worked out really well. Now there's also a second one called iCat 2, and if you can see, this one has um, almost doubled the lines that are there. So a little more echoing than the first one, this one, a little more intense with that one. I have only used this one. I have both patterns um, in my studio but I have only done this one so far. Um, I think it would have to be a client that really wants that extra effect there uh, to use that one. So that's iCat, and that was a wedding quilt that I made and gifted away as well. Then um, another thing I wanted to show you, this one wasn't a, um, this one was commissioned, uh, commissioned. This one was um, a client who has some um, antique things that uh, have been passed down to her. And one of those was a tablecloth um, that had been hand, not embroidered, but like the counted cross stitch on it. And let me insert a picture here. You can see what we did with it. We actually did two of these. I'm only going to show one here, and I don't even remember the um, pantograph that I used on it. But this is an antique tablecloth, and um, the client said, I'm not ever going to use this as a tablecloth anymore. Could you do something with it? And I, absolutely, we put a, a piece of batting and a backing fabric on it, and uh, stitched it up, and trimmed it up, and now um, she can use it as a throw on the couch. She can do it as a wall hanging. She could even still use it on the table if she wanted to. It could still definitely be a tablecloth as well. Um, so just giving new life to something that you might find in an antique store or you might find in uh, your grandmother's um, hope chest or something that's passed down to you. I, just, I love to do that, um, to keep some of our heritage with us, but to do it in new ways that we'll actually use and not just be put away in a box so that the next generation gets it and says, I don't know what this is, um, but to get it out and use it and tell the stories behind it. And um, so I hope you enjoyed that and hope you'll um, find some things like that that you can uh, pass down and uh, recreate and use and even maybe put your the initials on it of who um, Originally made the top and then you finish the back or you send it off to a quilter to be done You know, there's no shame in that as well and uh, And have something that your family can use so that finished out my July in August um, Again, I went back to some reproduction fabrics. So this one, uh, Kim Deal. I love Kim Deal stuff too. She came out with a new book called Simple Whatnots 3. So obviously there's a one and a two. But she did a little quilt along where she gave you a clue each week to go to the book and make um, certain parts of patterns. So she might send you, you know, say you're gonna make um, you know, this nine patch block like is on page, you know, 64. And then the next week, okay, make these pinwheel blocks like are on such page, such and such. And then at the very end of it, she had you put them all together. And I have not quilted mine, but I did want to show you. So then she had you put them all together. This would be a cute little table topper. And I just need to get mine quilted. Maybe I can get that done this week. So you might start out so you can see some pinwheel blocks, Ohio star blocks. You can see the block in the middle with uh, some small flying geese. Those are pretty tiny. And then, um, I'm not sure, are those snowflake blocks? I'm not sure what those are called. Or even these are really cute. So you've got the double pinwheel. So there's three of them on this side, three of them on the opposite side. And then, so in one week you were making, you know, these three of those and those three down there but we didn't know the final design until the end. And then you can see just a, um, no, just the little blocks as a border right there. So that was fun. You're using the book in a different way. I know designers are trying to do that, that don't just buy a book and then 
leave it, but to give you different options for it. So that was a lot of fun. And I'll link this one below if there's, um, she used a lot of, I would say Kim Deal, uh, a lot of reproduction colors, but then she adds in those purples and um, some pinkies. And she does some um, applique. Her applique things are really nice too. Um, so just some really cute. So here's, you know, similar to the um, reproduction, but then she adds in those pinks, those muted pinks and purples that I don't, you don't always see in the other colorways. And um, some are small projects, some are bigger. Some look, you know, fall. Here's a, an example of her applique. So she's got an applique piece in the middle. That one says it measures, oh, that is really tiny. It says the quilt size is 18 by 18. Oh, oh, I saw that picture and I thought it was a larger quilt. That is tiny. So this book being her Whatnots book, that's why these are a lot of tiny projects. But she has other books, Simple Grace, Simple, it all, they all start with Simple, which is really cute. And she does the antique stuff in her pictures as well, which I just love. So that was fun. So I'll try to get that one quilted, but I just wanted to show you. Did I see it up close, some of those fabrics? Look at that one. Isn't that cute? All right. Then in August, I finished my Lori Holt, My Happy Place quilt. So this was a sew along that Lori Holt started last summer through the fall or last fall through the winter, something like that. I did not, I wasn't able to keep up <laughs> with the sew along as it was going, um, but I did finish it. And this past August, I was able to quilt the top and get it bound. And I'll show you that one. So this one is again, a very large quilt. All of Lori's quilts are large. This is one of her um, applique quilts. I used all Lori Holt fabrics. So I'll hold it up big and then I'll get in closer to show you the different parts. Make sure I get it right. My happy place. This is all things sewing related. So let's go block by block um, and show you this. So on the four corners, those are pieced blocks there. Then we have the spools. The spools are pieced as well. The flower block underneath that one, that is applique. The fat quarters right there are pieced. No. I take that back, those were applique down. So they're squares, but then I applique them down. Then you have the yarn blocks, the red heart on them. The ball of, of uh, yarn, that is applique. You have the crochet or the crochet hooks underneath that, applique. The crocheted flowers are applique. Let's move down. We have the cross stitch, the scissors, first of all, and then the cross stitch skeins and the cross stitch. Isn't that cute? So you actually cross stitch on the on this fabric that is um, a pink and white check. And you actually cross stitch that design and then you applique the circles and then even added the little button so that it looks like the, uh, the little screw at the top of the hoop. Isn't that cute? And then the big center block is the sewing machine. This is all applique. And the pin cushion. Isn't that cute? All right, then you have several pieced blocks there. And then the scissors. So underneath the sewing machine, you can see all those, the 
the pieced blocks there. So kind of you alternate back and forth. You'll do some pieced ones and then you'll do some applique ones. Then you have the button jar and the latch hook and then four pin cushions all in different colors. And then across this way, you have a needle book, pieced block there in the sprayer bottle cute with the antique iron and using some rickrack as the cord, and that's all applique. Then you have the pieced blocks down across that that looks like, um, you know, a tablecloth or something like it was sitting on. And then the border. Isn't that cute? Now, in the binding, Lori doesn't do this on all of her quilts, but on this one she did you have, or she had you do a rickrack along with the binding. That's the first time I'd done that on a binding. I could have done a better job. I'll have to get better at that. And then I used one of her wide backings for the back. And on this one, I did um, wishbone as the pantograph. So let me see if I can get in close. There you go. You can see the wishbone. Now, um, this is the applique. I stitched right over the applique. I did the entire quilt top. I did not do the buttons. So I did the entire quilt top. I put that on the long arm, did, um, did the quilting, and then I went through and added the buttons. It was a little tricky because I did not want my buttons, the uh, thread to go through the back side. So I chose, if you notice, let me show you the um, pin cushions. I bought her button box, or buttons that went along with this. But when I was doing the quilt, I only chose the buttons that had two holes in it. That way I could, um, you know, bring my, I could just barely go under the first layer of fabric, bring up my thread, put the, the um, button up and down, and then actually tie off the button underneath there. So they may be a tad bit loose, um, but a four, you know, if you had a four hole, it would have been, I didn't know how to do it. Somebody else may be able to tell me. Um, but to do the buttons after the applique. And the reason I had to do it after the applique, or after the quilting is because I can't, I didn't want to go around these buttons. I wanted to do an o overall pattern. If your long arm quilter um, did more of a custom one where she could go around, he or she could go around, you just need to ask them whether they want the buttons on there prior to. I wanted to do an edge to edge design so I added the buttons on afterwards. I still think it looks really cute. So fun, fun, fun. There's those four. And then there's a couple large buttons. Oh, you gotta see the... I could have filled the whole one up, but I didn't. The whole jar, I only did half of it. And those are all Lori Holt buttons. You can buy those when you buy. So for Lori's patterns, when um, when she does a quilt along like this for um, an applique quilt, she has her um, so, so Simple Shapes is her way um, of doing the applique. And I'll show you the binder that I keep of what I did for this so long. So she prints this, or she um, provides this free PDF, and this is just in the front of my binder, and then it gives all the... All the instructions um, in here and then I even keep my so simple shapes in here this is the original package that they came in I just put some washi tape on the side of it three hole punched it and kept those in the original package but put it into my binder as well and if you're interested to know how she does her applique I refer you on to her YouTube channel um, and that's always a lot of fun. She's got another one, a garden one coming up, I think, with the house in the middle, the garden shed. I'm excited. Okay. Next week, next week I'm going to share my plans for 2023, and that may be in the plans. I've got to finish up some of that uh, thinking and stewing um, later this week, what I want to work on in 2023, but that may be one of the projects that I work on. Also in August, I finished another one. Another, this one's called, a, I call it my camper quilt.
and I'll have to put in the description down below the designer of this panel. I don't remember off the top of my head. Let me show you the whole thing first. All right, so the middle part, um, I got directions for this. I used a free panel. I don't know if it was mm, Martingale or Moda. I'm not quite sure. I just found one of their free patterns online on how to use panels, and that's what I used to come up with this. I did kind of modify it a little bit um, for my own, but I'll show you up close. The black is the edge of the panel. So all that middle part is all panel. Black is the edge of it. And then I added a white border here. And then these were um, a charm pack. I added some other fabrics that I had in with it. So you can see like that one matches the panel. Um, to fit the size that I wanted, I did larger squares on the side but notice that there's skinnier ones across the top and the bottom, but then larger down the side. And then another white border. And then this is not from the same line, but I thought it matched well enough, this, um, this pink flower one. And the camper that says, our journey is not measured in miles but adventures and friends we make along the way. I thought that was cute. So for the backing, I wanted to use up some of the other, of those outside fabrics. So I just made a bit of a checkerboard with a bunch of those fabrics. And then I had, part of the reason I had to do this is I didn't have enough of this to do the whole backing. This uh, matches the panel, obviously, and is a little different print than the smaller version on the front, but similar. But I didn't have enough of that to do the whole backing. So I just used some extras and made a big checkerboard stripe down the back. I thought that was cute. All right, so let's talk about the pantograph that I used on this one. This one is called Thread Garden. And I think it'll show up best on the white. And I'll show you the printout too, so you can see the whole thing. You can see almost a hot air balloon type thing down here. Very flowery. I'll just have to get out the, the printout so you can see it. Almost like a jack type thing there. <laughs> Let me find the the stitched out or the um, printed out one, so you can see this up close. Because it's an intense paint or um, pantograph as well. This one printed out very small, so obviously on the quilt itself it was much larger than this. And the darker part is the pattern, and all the others it's repeated. So, to me, this part right here kind of looks like a hot air balloon. Maybe it's like a seed bulb, I don't know. This over here almost looks like butterfly wings. And then you have this right here. Um, what are those one flowers that have just like the big purple ball on the top? Or kind of looks like the, uh, the old time jacks that you would play with. But since it's called Thread Garden, I'm assuming this is all like flower type things. So all different kinds, all different kinds of flowers, a little bit of leaf in there. So when I stitched it out, you know, it's much bigger. So I kind of judge it by the, uh, this hot air balloon type look <laughs> like there. You know, on this, you know, it's about the size of my finger. And on here, right there. So almost the size of my fist. So obviously I didn't stitch it out as tight as it shows here. And so this one, when it stitches out, 
it connects right here to the next little flower. And then it's stitching out this diamond shape here. And then going over here, stitching out the next diamond shape here. And so when you do the next line, it is um, nest into the other one. So here's the same diamond. So it takes some precision to line up there because um, you want this one to fit right down into the other one. But it worked really cute for this one because there's a lot of flowers on um, the panel. You can see it's like this one is the back of a truck with the blankets all in it. And then you've got uh, the pop-up, no, that's not a pop-up, pull-behind camper, um, tent, behind aren't those cute like glamping I wanted to we have a fire pit in the backyard where we'll do uh, campfires in the in the summertime and um, I've put the idea out there to my husband that wouldn't it be fun to get a camper like this I don't care that it runs I don't care that the tires are good I just want to park it back there and that be the girls so if you want to um, spend the night out by the campfire you can sleep in that one and then I want to get like an old horse trailer <laughs> and put bunks in it, and that would be the boy one. Wouldn't that be fun? You have a boy and a girl little things, I just think, one of these days. But this is kind of what gave me that idea. So this is my camper quilt. Um, this one's just for us. I picked up this panel, um, one of those expos that I talked about last week when I, you go to one spot and there's like 35 uh, quilt stores there. This is a panel I picked up at that time. Let me show you the binding. I did do a black and white gingham binding. And if you just see it there, it's like, why in the world would you do black? Um, but because of this black border there, I did the black on the binding. Just to kind of pull it together. I thought it was kind of cute there. All right. So you can kind of tell um, the summertime, you know, very springy. Um, bright colors and then the color palette kind of changes as you move through the season so then um, we're into Arizona <laughs> Arizona we're into August um, but the reason I said Arizona is because this next one looks very Arizona ish and let me tell you the story behind this back in April 2022 my husband and I took a trip to Phoenix Scottsdale Arizona um, we were there for about four days wonderful time I'd never been to well and since I was a kid I'd never been to Arizona so we were able to um, drive up to the Grand Canyon one day and see that we were able to go down into Phoenix and attend um, some baseball and tour the city and we had some other um, group activities that we were a part of but I always tried to find quilt stores when I'm in the area I got to visit um, a cross stitch store while we were there I loved that that was so much fun but I also got to visit a quilt store and um, find it right here in Mesa, Arizona, which is just, you know, if you know Arizona very well, Phoenix, Scottsdale, Mesa, they're all like right there together. And so this in April, when we were in Arizona, this magazine came out and this is quilt sampler. This comes out twice a year and it comes out in the spring, and in the fall winter type and this was the spring edition for 2022 and what it does is they um, show you inside 10 different quilt stores from around the country i love this magazine uh, I, w I wait for it i just love when it comes out because i love to see the different quilt stores and it shows you a map of where um, what i've also done if we've been traveling to somewhere i'll pull out my old magazines and see if there's a quilt store close by that's been in the magazine that we can go visit while we were on our way. So this magazine came out in April and that's when we were in Arizona. And this magazine featured a quilt store called Mad Bees Quilt and Sew in Mesa, Arizona. So actually the very first day that we were there, I was able to go to this uh, quilt store and visit the quilt store. The owner wasn't there. I did want her to have sign my, my uh, book but she wasn't there that day but after each they show you each quilt store each quilt store 
um, puts out a project that you can do as well. They give all the instructions for the project. But you can also order a kit from the quilt store itself if you want. Because we were in Arizona and I got to visit the store, I picked up one of the kits while we were there in Arizona. And so this was so fun because um, it matched our trip, um, gave us a remembrance of our trip, uh, and also my love for quilting. So in August is when I finally finished this project. It's just a table topper. Not necessarily my colorways, but it reminds me, it's like picking up a souvenir, you know. Um, so this one had a little bit of piecing, a little bit of applique, a little bit of foundation paper piecing, which I had not done before. And this is all the, the, the top is all the fabrics that came with the kit. And then I bought the backing fabric. Um, thought it had the same type of uh, Arizona feel and the binding on it. And then I just picked um, a pantograph that kind of had a Aztec type feel. This one is called Easy Go. It's one that comes on the Handy Quilter Pro Stitcher um, package when you buy it. Um, the designer is Sue Schmeiden. Sue Schmeiden. So it was one that was on there. Let's show you back. There you can kind of see the design a little better. But this is fun. I just keep this rolled up because, like I said, it's not necessarily my colorways, but it's a good way for my husband and I to remember our trip to Arizona and how much fun that was. And I just keep it rolled up and in a basket um, outside my sewing room. And that's a lot of fun. Then most of these, um, the quilts that I have left for the year were ones that I've already shown on other videos. So first of all, the um, t-shirt quilt that I made for my brother-in-law that uh, I mentioned this a couple videos back and I'll insert a picture here so you can see that one. So the short story with that one is my brother-in-law um, was a tree fluffer uh, for many years and he retired from that um, part-time position this past year and so uh, my sister-in-law asked if I could make a uh, quilt for him using the t-shirts that he would get each year from that job and I um, used the inspiration from Camille Roskelly's Alpine quilt to add some Christmas trees in with that. And so that quilt I finished in October and uh, just in time for his birthday. And my sister-in-law gifted that to him for his birthday. I used the Tree Doodles pantograph on that one. So I'll put a picture in close so that you can see what that looked like. Perfect, so that was October. And then November, I did another um, test quilt. And I've shown this one on previous videos, so I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it. Um, but this one was called the Irish Twist quilt. This one I used fig tree fabrics and a very fall feel to it. And I'll link previous videos where I've talked about this quilt. But this was another test pattern that I did. Um, and I really enjoyed this quilt. I did the mum's pantograph on this one. Went along with um, that fabric right there. And then that was a fun quilt. So like I said, if you want more information on that quilt, you can go back to um, some previous videos where I talked about that. Then in October, or November, that was November. I finished that one in November. I finished the wedding quilt for our friends and I'll insert a picture here so you can see that one. That pantograph was called Sprawl. That was a fun quilt. Then also in December, I finished this. So just this past month, finished long arm quilting this one. This is out of Lauren Holt's Scrappiness is Happiness book. I actually started it when she, from her YouTube videos. That's the Scrappy Crossroads quilt. That's what that one is right there. I finished that one. I finished that in December with the Sage Pantograph. Then also in December, I finished um, the Pumpkin Patch quilt um, that is right up there. And you can see that one on another video. 
and I finished Maggie's book quilt and I hung that back there and I talked about that one last week so if you haven't seen that quilt you'll have to go back that's called my personal library quilt that's um, a pattern put out by Crimson Tate um, I failed to mention the Irish twist quilt gotta give her a plug for her this is um, the designer is called from bolt to beauty from bolt to beauty and she has several patterns out you can visit her website um, but this was the test pattern that I did and like I said when I said that I um, mark up my pages <laughs> I make notes all through it um, want to be a big help to them uh, when they when they have a new pattern coming out um, the pumpkin patch quilt let me back up the pumpkin patch quilt comes from the county seat I have all these patterns laid out here um, pumpkin patch quilt comes from the county seat quilts book put out by Julie Hendrickson the library quilt back there comes from this pattern put out by Crimson Tate my personal library quilt and like I said you can go back to last week's video to see more details about that one and I have one more quilt that I finished up for a Christmas gift and gave to my son and let me put in some pictures here So a while back, my son had mentioned that um, he would like a quilt made from, um, actually he mentioned t-shirts from different branches of the military. He's not in the military, but has a high respect for the military. And uh, he mentioned that he would like a, a quilt made from t-shirts from all the branches of the military. Um, about a week before Christmas, I had the inspiration of finding military fabrics and actually making him a quilt. So this is a very simple quilt. I did um, 10 inch blocks with some sashing in between, but I was able to find all five branches of the military um, fabric at Joanne Fabrics. And I purchased those a week before Christmas, um, cut them uh, into the 10 inch squares, put, um, I think I did a three inch sashing in between each one and then um, around each one and then a border three inch border around each one and it made a large enough quilt for I think he has um, a queen queen size bed he's not at home anymore he has his own place now so but he needed a bigger quilt and so I made that for Christmas gave that to him yesterday I used the Karen's chevron pantograph like I'd mentioned on a couple other quilts and um, he really enjoyed that. So that was my last quilt shot, quilt project for the year. So if I totaled it all up, I have 25 quilts or table toppers that I finished in 2022. I had no idea. I had no idea. So I want to encourage you. If you um, haven't done it so far, sit down and make a list of all the projects that you worked on this past year. It's such a, a, a cool feeling to know that I made all these and how many homemade gifts that I gave because sometimes maybe that's why I don't remember all that you make because um, you give them away and you don't see them sitting around the house. But uh, it was a neat, a neat experience to, to um, gather all these up and to see what I'd actually finished in 2022. So I encourage you to do the same. So next week, as I mentioned earlier, I will be putting together um, just a, a short outline maybe uh, or a plan of the projects that I want to work on. Obviously things change. I'm not mapping out my entire year, but at least the things that I know are on the horizon that I want to be working on that you might want to be a part of. Some are quilt alongs, some are projects that uh, I've got in the works and I want to finish up. And um, of course, there's always customer quilts. I added up real quickly before I came on camera today, almost 100 client quilts this past year as well. So that's why some months um, I didn't finish up things as much. And maybe that's why I don't have the bindings done on some others is because I, I continue to work on a lot of client quilts as well. And that's what I'm here for. So if you have long arm quilting that needs to be done, you can always visit my website at TammyErnestQuilting.com. There's instructions there that you can um, download and print out so that uh, you know how to get your quilt to me. It has all the pricing information and all the prep instructions are there as well. So if you are, if you enjoyed this video as well, would you um, uh, 
uh, consider subscribing to my channel so that I know that's just an encouragement to me to know that uh, you're liking what I'm putting out. Um, and I want if you've got suggestions for me, if you leave those in the comments, I'd appreciate that as well. I wish you a happy, happy new year, start of a new year, and I'll be back with you next week as we talk about plans for 2023.